rise for everyone, and we're actually having uh, this service in the church. Uh, I thought people would uh, want to see the church, and several others agreed. And so uh, hopefully soon we will be back in this building all together, uh, and we'll be uh, sharing some new things that we'll be doing uh, so we can keep everyone healthy and safe. <clears throat> and it's good to see you in the house of the Lord, and we are worshiping together this morning on, on live, so uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've provided for us to be in your house to share it with our community online this morning. Lord, we just pray for those online and request things that they have. So, Father, as we worship, we just lift you up and we glorify you and we, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a special treat this morning. Uh, Brother Caden is going to come and share with us some singing. Scripture from Romans chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> Today's message is entitled, Sharing Hope. Sharing Hope. Romans 15, 1 through 5. <clears throat> and uh, as we read the scripture this morning, uh, uh, don't forget that what we're talking about today is sharing the hope of Jesus Christ with people and and, you know, in this difficult time that we've been in, we uh, hope to be back together in this house of worship, and hoping for a, a better day and hoping for a cure for coronavirus and praying that everyone will be able to get back to work and things will get back to normal soon. We pray that Jesus uh, is Lord of all and he's glorified. So as we start this morning, let's look at the first five verses. And then later we're going to add verse 6. 
So now it says, now we who are strong have an obligation to bear the witness weaknesses of others without strength, and not to please ourselves. Each one of us is to please his neighbor for his good, to him to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, on the contrary, as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For whatever is written was written in the past, it was written for our instruction, so that we may have hope through, through endurance and through encouragement from the scriptures. Now may the God who gives endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another according to Christ Jesus. <clears throat> we that are strong, Christians, I pray that you're strong today. I pray that you're healthy. I pray that all that you do is strength from our Lord, from God, because we have an obligation. The ones of us who are strong in our faith have an obligation to those who are weak. It says we are to bear the witness or bear, bear the weakness of our weaker brothers and sisters. We are to bear their weakness. We're supposed to help them. We're supposed to bear their burdens for them. When we see someone who is weak, we are to bear what they are bearing and help them through their problems and help them through their hard times. We have an obligation. It is our obligation. And now, you know what an obligation is. An obligation is something we are required to do as Christians. As Christians, we are required to bear the weakness of those who are not strong. And so part of that is new Christians. When we have new Christians, we are to help them bear their burdens. We are to encourage them. We are to encourage them in their weakness and make them strong, help bring them to a stronger point in their life. Without, in this, in this case, they are without strength if they are young in their, in their Christianity. And so they have a little strength, but as we encourage them as, as Christians, as we, the stronger Christians, encourage them, they become stronger in their faith and stronger in their witness. So we that have a strong witness are to encourage those who are weak <clears throat> and to bear their burdens. The second thing we see here is we are to please our neighbor. And I hope during this time, I've seen lots of acts of kindness during this time, <clears throat> and we've all tried to be a part of acting kind to people who need things. But we are to please our neighbor. We are, uh, we are to help our neighbor. We are to help um, each other and getting through this and getting through this time of, of uh, coronavirus. And so we are to help our neighbor. We are to be a part of our community and to help them for their good. To be good to them and to help them for their better good. And as far as that goes, that means we, if we see a neighbor with a need, if we see a neighbor that uh, has some specific thing that they they are needing, we are to help them. We are to do it for their good. We are to help them to help their better good. And so we're to build them up. The scripture tells us we are to build up our neighbor. We are to help our neighbor to the point where we encourage them and we build them up to a stronger faith. And so we are to please our neighbor, it says. <clears throat> the third thing that we look at this morning is Christ did not please himself. Christ did not please himself. It says the insults of those who, in, who insult, uh, you have, insult you have fallen on me. So in other words, all of those things that, that are said about Christ or are said about you are really being said about Christ. If somebody doesn't like you for you being a Christian, they're not turning that towards you. They are not liking or they are not wanting the Christ that is in you. 
And so it says here that Christ didn't please his own doings. He came to please the Father. He pleased God the Father. And so we see that Jesus Christ died on the cross at the Father's will and at God's will. And so he didn't come to say, hey, look at me, I'm Jesus. He told them, I'm Jesus, the Son of God. He told them, I'm the bread of life. He told them, I'm the water, the living water. But he never, he never came to glorify himself. He often said, I come because my Father sent me. My Father sent me. My Father must receive the glory. In other words, God must receive the glory for sending Jesus Christ. It says here that he didn't please himself. He pleased the Father. <clears throat> Our job as Christians is to please the Father through, through Jesus Christ's blood and by the Holy Spirit, his presence. We are to please the Father. We are to please God and to give him honor and give him glory. <clears throat> Paul also told the Romans here, he said, look, whatever is written in the past, it's there for a reason. God's word. You know, a lot of people will say, well, God's word was written so long ago. God's written, written word was so long ago. And it, it was, it's an old book. But I'll tell you what. We must know that that old book, that old book, God's word, is our instruction. It is written in the past, of course. But it is our instruction. It is God's word. He says, God's word, the scriptures are for our instruction that we may have hope through endurance, through the encouragement of the scriptures. You know, we talked about a neighbor that was weak or someone who is weak in their faith. We are to use the scriptures to share with them uh, God's word and, and, and have, give them the encouragement they need uh, in God's word. It says, for our instruction to teach us, us, but also to teach others that we have hope in this. <clears throat> the last thing that we want to look at this morning is the result. The result is actually in 5 and 6. And it talks about how the encouragement of God, that God, through his encouragement, gives us endurance and grants us to live in harmony with one another. And so... We must live in harmony with God and glorify God. But we also must be in harmony with our neighbor and in harmony with the people around us so that we, we can show them the glory of God. We can show them who God is and we can encourage them through the scriptures. And it says that the, the last scripture I mentioned is verse 6. It says, so that you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with one mind and one voice. I mean, this includes the church, one voice, right? You know, we look at the church and we see uh, the fact that there are many Christians here in our church and, and the Christians that come together and worship so that we can encourage people through the Scripture, through God's Word, whatever was written in the past, and instruct them and then, then we must glorify God the Father as in one mind and in one voice. And I, I pray that all churches are speaking the name of Jesus Christ. I hope that all churches are telling people about the gospel during this time uh, while, we were, while we were on the, uh, in our homes and, and away from everything. I was going to call it on leave, I guess. But uh, we're not, we've not left. We've not gone anywhere. The church is still here. <clears throat> and, you know, this is the building. It's a beautiful building. And, but the people that are not here today uh, are missed. And so hopefully soon we will be able to come back together and we'll be able to share with one another and live in harmony with God. But the most important thing I think the church should lift up in one voice is the, is the fact that the gospel of Jesus Christ must still be spread to the world. First of all, admitting your sin and admitting, realizing that you're a sinner, that God uh, has come to give you hope and give you life. So admitting your sin and realizing that 
God I've made mistakes and I'm a sinner and I need God. Believing, believing that God raised Jesus from the dead and conquered death to, for our sins, to, to forgive us from our sins. And the third thing is to confess, and that is to pray and ask Jesus uh, to be your Lord and Savior. And if you've done that today, uh, you can comment amen. I would like to hear one, but, <laughs> but you can comment and, and just let people know that you're a Christian today. If you're not a Christian, you can ask Jesus to come into your heart by simply praying, Lord, I confess to you that I'm a sinner, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Savior. Come to Jesus today if you would. As we come together today, uh, there's lots of things I'll share after the service on this video. But today, share Jesus. Share hope. There is hope that we're going to be back in this building soon. We're going to be able to, uh, we, we may have a new normal for a while. We may have things that we have to do for a while. But it will get back together. God, will, God is taking care of it. He's put us in our homes to see the beauty of spring right out our, our windows. And I hope to see you soon and we can fellowship together. And we have another song today and then I will close. But Caden is coming again and he's going to share a closing song today. service, but I'm going to stay on for a few announcements, okay? So let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we come to you this day and we thank you for this service that we've had today. We pray for each and every person that was listening and watching. Father, we just pray that uh, soon we will be back in our building and soon we will be able to worship together. And so in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, a uh, couple of announcements. Uh, <clears throat> I would say next week we will be having a uh, meeting with myself and the deacons and we will be discussing when and how and 
the, all the specifics and the rules and things we're supposed to follow to open the church back up to worship. And so please pray for us that we make the right decisions and keep you safe. <clears throat> Just remember that whatever decision is made, that we are keeping everyone's best interest at heart. And so please understand that we'll do the best we can. So you pray for us that, that we will make the right decisions and that we will keep everybody healthy and safe. Uh, the, the next thing is next Sunday is Mother's Day. And so it being Mother's Day, uh, I want you to understand that the church uh, still has some gifts for, for all the mothers. <clears throat> and uh, if you would like uh, Susie and I and, and maybe some people that can, are coming to help, but Susie and I are going to be at the front steps of the church next Sunday morning at 12 o'clock. If you are a mother and you would like to come and get your gift from uh, the church for Mother's Day, we would ask you to come and drive by and you can roll your window down. We don't want anybody getting out of the cars, please. Please respect that. <clears throat> uh, we're not allowed to hug or handshake yet, but we're, we will soon. <clears throat> but please, uh, if you're a mother and would like a gift, uh, every year we try to do something for the for the ladies in the church that are mothers. So if you like your gift, be here at noon, next Sunday on Mother's Day, or maybe a few minutes before, and come in the parking lot and line up, and then you can drive by one at a time, uh, and we will give you your Mother's Day gift. We would love to see you and speak to you personally, and uh, if you need prayer, we will stop right there and have prayer with you, and however you would like. But uh, we, we would like for you to come by. Uh, we would love to see our congregation. We love you. And we miss you. <clears throat> and we're probably looking at just a couple of, couple of weeks away here. We may be able to have a service uh, in our church. So please come by. Get your gift. Uh, we love you. And we appreciate you. And, and all you moms, we want you to have a special day next week. So God bless you. And until we meet again or see each other again online, uh, Lord willing, I will see you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock online. So God bless you, love you, and have a good day.